Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. We believe you. Father, I thank you that you're working in our midst. Father, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that has not waned one iota since he came upon this earth. Father, I thank you for a great, mighty working of your Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for life flowing forth, Father, through your kingdom. And we glorify you today. Lord, open our ears, open our hearts to hear today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share with you today from the Word of God. I um, um, <laughs> I was gone last week, so I'm, 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 I'm a week behind here uh, with this. But I want to share with you today. Uh, from the Word of God, kind of what I started on week before last. Last week I was, um, everybody asked me how my vacation was. Is going to Disney with your grandkids <laughs> in a hundred degree weather, is that, is that really vacation? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> you know, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, it is. We had we had a good time with the grandkids, and um, but I'm glad to be back. But so if you weren't here week before last, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna I'm gonna preach this, and you'll hear it, and it'll help you. Uh, but I, I I shared about living a Jesus life, and um, uh, I, one of the points that I made about living a Jesus life is that He gives you a destiny beyond your natural existence. You know, I, that, that, I think sometimes we take that for granted, that when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, everything changes. Direction changes. Your future changes. Your lifestyle changes. Your life, your life flow, where you're going in life, all of it changes. And sometimes I think we just kind of think we're just living life when you don't realize, no, you're a Christian now and God's trying to direct your life. And by and large, I believe he does direct our lives. But I believe we can always be a lot more refined in how we hear the Lord. I I missed it, and I know this is kind of off the base a little bit today, but I missed something when we were at at Disney um, that I should have done that I missed that I believe the Lord wanted me to do. How many of you ever done that? Yeah, there were were some kids there, and it was obviously they were were, uh, special needs kids, and they were there with a group, and and I just really kind of felt a tug of, uh, to, to bless them, you know, to let them buy something, you know. But I, I got distracted and I missed it. And by the time I got back to it, they were gone. So we all, we're not, we're not perfect at what we do and, and by any stretch of the imagination. But the point is that, that our goal is to live uh, our destiny out and it's beyond anything you could have ever lived on your own. Hey, the life I've lived there is no way I could have lived it without Jesus. The places I've been, the things I've seen, the glory of God that I've been a part of, I, I, there's, no, there's no expression to communicate the difference between living the life Jesus has for you and trying to live a worldly life and to live like you want to live. Man, I'd much rather live like God's life. He's got a plan for you that's greater than anything you could ever do on your own. Ever do on your own. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 12. Listen to what it says. And I, I think this will help you um, understand this a little, bit, a little bit better. It says, at that time, this is before Jesus, you were without Christ, aliens from the commonwealth, of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. See, before you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you had no hope. You had no help with God from God. 
You know, I mean, I used to pray prayers all the time that, that, that I, I don't know, God never answered them, but, but I remember praying some prayers, you know, that, that man, I needed help. You know, but, and, and I know, you say, well, I, I pray, God, if you'll get me out of this, I'll serve you. And hey, he'll respond to that. Yeah, he will, but you better do what he said, what you said. Amen. But the point is, just living life, everyday life, without God, there's no hope. But when you live with him, you have a destiny beyond your natural existence. It says you have no real covenant family. That's what the commonwealth of Israel is talking about there. You have no covenant family with God. You know, you got a family that, that, that should and should be responsible enough to stick closer to you and your own family. Because we're going to be together forever. Some of your family may not be there. Yeah, amen. So now we have this capacity to live a life that we have hope in God. God's in our lives. And not only that, I don't have time to get into this today. We can live by the power of God. That's what the Bible says. And we can live that life. So let me just show you this so you can understand that that's God's intention. That was God's plan, and it always has been. Listen to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to a prophet for the nations. Now, I just want to tell you, uh, the thing you've got to understand is this. Don't ever think that, well, that was just because he was a prophet. No, <clears throat> it was because he was a human being. God knew him before he was formed. Amen. I mean, we're in the midst of this, and I'm going to share a little bit here just about this. In the midst right now of all of this, uh, 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 the, the, the uh, Roe v. Wade and all the things that have happened just in the few last few days in regarding abortion, God knows every person in a moment of time before even they were formed. Listen to what Psalm 139 says, just so you'll know God's with you, okay? Psalm 139, verse 13 says this. For you formed my inward parts. You covered my, me in my mother's womb. That word there, covered, means wove me in my mother's womb. Don't kid yourself. The act of, of carrying a child is an act of God. From beginning to it is an act of God. God formed and he, he wove in, in, in the womb. The Amplify, I mean, the Passion Translation says, carefully and skillfully shaped me. It says in verse 14, I will praise you for I, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you ever get that attitude about your life, you'd be amazed at how much better, how much more comfortable you'd feel in your life. How are you today? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you. That's what God thinks about you. That's how he, he, he covets you. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul well knows. Let me tell you something. There's not one person on the face of this earth that deep down in them doesn't know that there is a creator and that God created them. Okay. It's in, it's in us. It's in our DNA. Since the moment Adam breathed life, since the moment God breathed life into Adam, that life was imparted to humanity. So, you, so whether you like it or not, you know. Whether you want to admit it or not, you know. Now, I know I'm talking to the choir here today, but you just need to understand that's the way God thinks. Verse 15 says, my frame was not hidden from you. you when I was made in secret. Yeah, I'd, I'd like... I'm not going to talk about that, but just, just so you understand it, God watches your sex life, okay? Okay. Enough said. 
When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Now, now listen to this. Your eyes saw my substance being unformed. Well, that's not a baby. That's just tissue. No, no. Mm -mm. Nope. It's just the beginning of being formed. It's still God's creation. Listen, this, this whole thing about abortion uh, is a rebellion against God. Okay, and I'm going to show you this. Just, just hang with me. And I, I'm, I'm, this is not my message, but it's part of my message today. I just couldn't not say something today about this. But, but listen to this. It says, in all your book, in, in verse uh, 16, in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet they were none of them. Amplified Bible says, in your book all the days of my life were written. Now, now listen to me today. You say, well, God's got a day I'm going to die. He knows the day. He knows the day, but it's because he's God. It's not because he's chosen that day and said, you're going to die tomorrow. Because he told the children of Israel, I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. I believe we can live a satisfied life. That's, I believe that's what the Word of God says. Amen. But what you need to understand here is this. When you understand this, you realize how important life is to God from the womb, even as it's being created. Okay, even as it's being created, God's there. He sees it. Well, what about all the, uh, the deformities? And I mean, you can go into all kinds of different scenarios. And one of the things I can just tell you I don't have time to get in is this. We live in a cursed world. You have to fight off that curse. So things don't go perfectly, not because God's making it or not making it, but because of the world we live in. Okay, so I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to waste our time, not waste our time, spend our time talking about that. But listen to this. So there is a, 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 a vital biblical truth that life begins really, I'm going to say it, during conception, because God's watching. This is, this is not a lightweight thing with God. So the fact that our nation's highest court chose to protect that life to a degree is important. I believe it is a direct answer of prayer. Right, listen to me. I will tell you, listen, you've got to understand that if we can turn that around, what else can we turn around while we're still on this earth? If we can turn around millions of babies being aborted, if we can turn that around and the and judicial system can be readjusted to the point that it chose life, it chose the reality of God's Word, it chose what was righteous, how much more can we do while we're still here? So don't give up. Don't look at some things and say, well, that'll never change or this will never change. Just keep praying. Don't give up. Don't give in. Listen, we still got a long way to go. There are states right now that are actually marketing their states as an abortion state. I wouldn't want to live there. I mean, if I had to, I would, but I guarantee you I'd be praying. But I want to tell you something. Thank God Louisiana is not one of them. And we live, our neighbors in Texas and Arkansas and, Louis, and Mississippi and, all, and our neighbors, they all believe the same way. Thank God for that. Amen. Thank, thank the Lord for that. So righteous decisions can still be made. Now, darkness doesn't like that light. It doesn't like it. And, and a lot of times people don't understand this battle this, that we're dealing with here. But Jesus said this in John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. 
Okay? So you need to understand that that's where we live our lives, in between killing, stealing, and destroying and the life of God that Jesus brought us. That's how we live our lives. And people have, and, and listen, the thing you have to be careful about as a Christian, don't get caught up in all the rhetoric about it. Well, what about rape? Well, what about incest? Well, what about this? What about that? L listen, I, I, read, I, I read a few things online about it, and I'm not going to quote much of it, but I read one lady. She said, she said um, um, well, abortion gives us the ability to have sex anytime we want to. See, there's no concept of what's at stake. No concept of what's at stake. And if you're not careful, you can get caught up in some of that. And, well, that sounds reasonable if, if it's incest or if it's, if it's right. Well, what if the baby's going to be born deformed? What if, what if the baby's going to have some abnormalities? Listen, Becky, we pl placed a baby one time with Mercy that they knew had Down syndrome before the baby was born. There were people beating on the door to take that baby. Okay. So that, that, that whole talk, that whole way of talking, don't get caught up in any of that. Just draw the line that life belongs to us, life belongs to the children, and, and, and the enemy's coming to try to kill, steal, and to destroy. Listen, I want to tell you something today. I have a, I have a beautiful daughter, and I have three grandchildren, and my daughter, her, her birth mother, had an appointment to get an abortion, was on the way to get an abortion, but heard someone speak about giving that baby up and the reality of life and chose to give that baby life and give that baby up, and that's our daughter, Lainey. She's also our children's pastor. So don't tell me that there are, there, there, there's life is, a, see, she's able to fulfill God's plan for her life. Listen, she's able to fulfill God's plan for her life because of that. There are a lot, and listen, I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I would guess that there are people here who've had abortions. And I'm not trying to condemn you today, but I am telling you that you know now or you should know now it was wrong. And I know and I trust you've asked God to forgive you and he forgives you and you can live a full life and you'll see that child in heaven and, and, and it, it'll be okay. But I also know, and I had, I had one, I may not get the rest of my message. I may have to preach it later. But I also know one, one particular lady, she's actually a member of our church and before she got saved, she said, you know, uh, abortion was just my birth control. And I forgot, I think she had six. I can't remember, five or six abortions. It was just her birth control, you know. Oh, I got pregnant. Well, I can take care of that. But she got saved. So that, that life is important. That life is valuable. And there is a destiny for that life. And, and, and the enemy comes and he kills that. He convinces people there is no destiny. I could go, I could tell you lots of people he, 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 uh, that, 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 that pertains to. We have a lady in our church, and I asked her if I could share this. I've shared it before. I'm not going to mention her name today, but, but, but um, um, her birth mother dropped her off at a dumpster. But God had plans for her. Somebody found her, and she was raised in a good home and is a very uh, capable educator today. Uh, in fact, very influential in our education system in Cattle Parish today. God had a plan for her life. And thank God he was able to, that, 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 clo that close to not having that plan fulfilled. But yet God, God had a destiny for her life, a future, a plan, a purpose for her life. And I, I could go on and on, but you've got to understand and realize that, that uh, I've got two daughters and a son today because uh, uh, mothers decide to give life to their children because all three of our children are adopted. 
I thank God for that. I, 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 my, my, I, uh, my, I, I got an uh, email from my friend Nancy Alcorn of Mercy Ministries, and, and they're so excited because they believe that this is going to cause a flood of, of young women that are going to give up their babies. That are, those babies are going to actually have to be able to live out their destiny on the earth, that they're going to actually do what God's called them to do on the earth. Don't get caught up in the, in the semantics of all of this. Go read Psalm 139. That's it. That, that, that's the bottom line. That's, 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 that's it. So here's what's happening, okay? And I'm going to share this with you, and I'm going to try to get back to, my word, to the Word today that I want to share with you. But, but Psalm chapter 2, this is what's happening, okay? So you'll understand why all these people are literally going nuts, okay? Listen to verse 1 of Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and people plot vain things? Now listen to this. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's Jesus. Saying, now listen to this, saying, you ready? Let us break their bonds in pieces, cast away their cords from us. Listen to what the Passion Translation says. Let's come together and break away from the Creator. Once and for all, let's cast off these controlling chains of God and His Christ. If you want to know what's really going on, you want to know why you're seeing all this rebellion, it's because people are trying to cast off those chains of God and, and the Christ. They're not really chains. You know that, right? But uh, to cast those off, so that they can do what they want to do and, be re and not be restrained in any way. And listen to me. If that happens, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. It's going to be promoted more and more and more and more. But here's the good news. This ought to tell you what happened. We can pray. We can still pray. We can still stop turn. We can turn stuff. And, and, and the Bible calls us the, the group of people who, are, who stand against that Antichrist spirit and restrain it. So you've got to understand that. So here's what I like about it. Verse 4 says this. You ready? Psalm 2, 4. Listen to this. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. You know, what, you know what the Lord's doing? He's laughing. He's laughing. All these people, these women that are, that are, are acting fools, I'm proud of my abortions. Let me tell you something. They may say that with their mouth, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a place deep down inside of them. No, it ain't, it's not true. It's not true. Listen, I've talked to too many people and heard too many testimonies of people who've had abortions. It lives with you. It goes with you your whole life. Even if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, there's, it's there. Because God's creation was the on, on the inside of you. So you have to understand where we are with this. Uh, we, we, we won a battle. We didn't win the war. And there are a lot of things that we need to pray and continue to pray about and let righteousness prevail and let God work in supernatural ways that we can't even fathom. It wasn't about a, a, a man. It wasn't about a president who did all of this. It was God who did it. And you've got to know that and you've got to understand that. And the ways of God are beyond our finding out. You don't know, hey, he can work in ways you can't ever imagine. We had a president a number of years ago I was complaining about. Literally praying and complaining. I'm supposed to be praying for him, but I was complaining about him. And the Lord rebuked me. He said, before you start complaining, you might want to go see what he's doing to help the poor. Well, I was embarrassed. Not saying he was a perfect president by any stretch of the imagination, but, but God sees things differently than we do. So don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in that. Just pray that righteousness is going to prevail. Amen? Because every person deserves to live out their destiny. 
That's God's goal. That's God's plan. He wants us to live out our destiny. Back over in Psalm 139, I'm going to read this out of the Living Translation, verse 17 and 18. Listen to what it says. How precious it, it, how precious it is, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. I love that. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn toward me. When I'm awake in the morning, you are still thinking about me. The Bible says he thinks about you as the numbers of sand, grains of sand there are. That's how his thoughts go toward us. We're his creation. He has plans. He has destiny. He has future. He has purpose. And what we do a lot of times is we get distracted by the enemy who's trying to steal that from us, and we try to blame God for what the enemy's doing or wonder why things don't work perfectly. Listen, I'm going to tell you, okay, things are about to work perfectly because Jesus is coming back. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, when he comes back, everything's going to work perfectly. Right now, we have an adversary. Even the great apostle Paul said, I would have come to you once and again, but I was hindered by the devil. So you have to just fight life through. You've got to understand that and know that. But you've got to know that God thinks about you. His, he, his purposes, His plans for you. Listen to Jeremiah 29, 11 in the NIV. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's our God. That's who I serve. And no matter how many times the enemy tries to come into my life or into my family and try to change that, I just smile and say, no, God's got a plan. No, God's working. There's a destiny here. There's a purpose here. There's a future here. You may have children and they're out not serving God or grandchildren, they're not serving God. Listen to me. God's still got a purpose for them. God's still got a plan for them. He can turn their life in a heart, but you keep praying. Don't give up. Don't give in because God's still working. God can do something great. All you have to do is just stay with it. Listen, I like the way the Lord said it. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Well, those, that word there is thoughts. So when it talks about him thinking the thoughts of the sand of the sea over you, those are the thoughts that God thinks about your plans, about your future, about your destiny. And it's always so that you can prosper and he's not there to harm you. He wants you to have hope and he wants you to have a future. So listen to me today. Don't run from God's plan for your life. Run to it. So many Christians today, they don't have any understanding or concept that God has plans and purposes for their life. They just kind of live in how they want to live, doing what they want to do and come to church and praise God and say amen and then go live like they want to live. Listen, that's not the way to live life. Live in, now I'm not bragging on me, so please don't misunderstand. It's just, it's just an example that... Living life is being at Disney and finding somebody you could bless. You get to go to Disney, but guess what? You get to bless somebody. Living life is just obeying the Holy Spirit in your life and touching other people's lives and ministering to other people and being a blessing and letting God use you in your life and giving you direction and telling you this is what you need to do. Don't do this. I know that looks good, but that's not what I have for you. Hey, God can lead you if you'll just let him. He'll just, he, he'll guide your life. Listen, uh, and, and I want to use Paul as an example here so that you can understand this. Um, <clears throat> Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, he said, when it pleased God, now notice this, who separated me from my mother's womb, he called me through his grace. Now, now how many of you know that, that, that Paul didn't just jump into that? He did just the opposite. He did just the opposite. 
that was what God had for him, and he was doing just the opposite. I know that feeling real well. I was a Saul who became a Paul because I was doing just the opposite of what God wanted for my life. Don't kid yourself into thinking that, 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 that God can't do something with that. He had, a divine, he had to have a divine encounter with God for his destiny. What happened? Well, Jesus appeared to him, knocked him off his donkey. I was going to use another word, but I better not. <laughs> he had a divine encounter. Listen to me. He had a divine encounter with the very one that he was trying to destroy. Jesus said to him, why are you persecuting me? He had to have that. Now, there are a lot of reasons why it, it came to that. But here's what you've got to understand. In verse 9, Jesus said something to Paul, and this is where a lot of people live their lives. Listen to what it says in Acts chapter 9 in verse 5. Listen to this. It says, it is hard for you to kick against the goads or the pricks. That's like kicking against a cactus. Sitting down in a cactus, fighting a cactus with your bare hands. That's exactly what Paul was doing. Everything he did was kicking against, listen to me, what God had called him to do, his destiny in life. And it was always painful. Something hurt. Even though there was a destiny out there for Paul, it was not something that came to him. The Amplified Bible says it this way. It is dangerous and it will turn out badly for you you ready? Listen, it is dangerous. It will turn out badly for you to keep kicking against the goads to offer vain and perilous resistance. It is dangerous when you're not willing to follow the destiny and the plan that God has for your life and you choose to do what you want to do. And it may not show up overnight. It may be days. It may be months. It may be years before it shows up. But it's dangerous not to, to follow God's plan and destiny for your life and just to do what you want to do. You don't want to resist what God has for you. Now listen to this. There are today protesters and rioters in the streets who are Saul's just waiting to be transformed. They're out there, especially, you know, these women. It breaks my heart. Beck and I were talking about this this weekend. It breaks our heart to see these women acting and talking the way they are, you know. But, but here's the thing about it. They could just be a Saul fixing to become a Paul. They're just resisting. They're just resisting. Paul did that. He resisted. Paul knew, he knew exactly what, what to do, but he was resisting. You know, Paul was there when Stephen was martyred, when Stephen preached that message. He was, he was there. And it says that, that, the, that the Lord pricked their hearts. Saul's heart was pricked right there. But it didn't stop him. He kept going. Some of these, their hearts are being pricked and they just keep going. But I want to tell you something. It doesn't mean they're not going to have an encounter with God. Paul was talking in Romans chapter 11 about the children of Israel and, and, and the believer today. And he made a statement, and I'm going to just use part of it. I think it'll help you understand this. He said that concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they're beloved for the sake of the Father. You know, today, there are a lot of people that are enemies concerning the gospel, but those same people are the ones that Jesus loved and died for. It's a very unusual paradox. They're enemies, but yet God loved them. And all they have to do is make one step and make Jesus the Lord of their life to be totally changed, to be totally transformed in their lives. So don't discount that. Sure, they look like enemies today, and they are. 
The word, the word there, enemies, just so you'll understand this, the word there, enemy, is used as uh, of men as at enmity with God by their sins or opposing God in their mind. So they're enemies in a way. But on the other hand, Jesus died for them. And so it, it, it doesn't take much just to flip that script, to change that, to transform that person and to be just the opposite of what they were, just like Paul. So I want to tell you today, listen to me, you have a destiny in your life. You, you have, God has plans for you. He has purpose for your life. And, and you've got to understand that I need to walk in that. And if you're feeling the pricks of life and, and the angry and about life and all these things, you might want to examine, am I really doing what God wants me to do? Am I really walking the way God wants me to walk? Am I really fulfilling the plans that God has for my life? Hebrews chapter 1 says this, We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us. And here it is. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Every person's got a race to run. Every person's got a destiny with God. And, 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 it, and listen, it, it's not, it doesn't have to be glamorous. Think about Ananias, the one that, that, that Paul came to after his encounter with Jesus. Ananias didn't even want to mess with me. He said, Jesus, don't you know who this is? That's the only time you hear his name. But he fulfilled his destiny. Not that that was all that he did for the Lord his whole life, but that's what we have written. You don't know that you might not be an Ananias. You may never be a Saul, which becomes a Paul, but you might be an Ananias who helps somebody else. There are all sorts of destinies that God has. There are people that, that came into my life, especially when I first got saved, that helped me lead me to my destiny. You may be one of those for someone else. You don't know, but, but you have to lay aside and let God's work in your life because he's got a, ra a race for you to run. It's not sitting on the couch watching Andy Griffin <laughs> or hopefully not something else. Amen. You've got to make up your mind. I'm going to find God's plan. I'm going to walk in God's plan. And I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to go the way He wants me to go in my life. And it is an endurance race. And the second verse tells us real clearly, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. Now listen to this. Because I want to add this to it real quick. I'm not going to take but a minute with this, but just listen. You got to understand that your destiny goes beyond this life into eternity. The Word of God teaches us that there will be rewards for those who live their right lives on God's path. And they're, they're, God's, God is not an equality person, an equity person, He's a fruit inspector. And so your life, my life, will be examined at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. And there will be rewards. And they won't all be equal. Well, I didn't get what they get, and I was a good person. You will have no argument. God will show you your life. You will have no argument. There will be none. So there is, a, there is a future. If you look at Revelations, God said this. He said, I'm going to give you the tree of life in the paradise of God. I'm going to give you power over nations. You're going to sit with Jesus in his throne, and you're going to judge nations. Now, I, I'm not saying this is thus saith the Lord. You ever wonder why there's so many planets in the, in the solar system? You ever stop to think God might put one of us on every one of them? Or two of us, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what he's got in mind. I know we're going to worship him through eternity. But I think he's got plans for us. I think he's already thinking about his plans for you down the road. Let's see now. 
Robert, hey, what am I going to do with him after he gets to heaven? I got a plan for him. I don't know what it is. He created us to be like him for a purpose. Now, don't, don't run off with that. But I'm just telling you, you've got to know there are plans for your life beyond this world. But, but here's the thing I do know, what you do here matters on what happens there. Okay? So destiny on this earth is important. Now, I'm going to make a statement to you, and I want to listen. And this sounds self-serving, but it's a fact. The destiny of the believer, listen to this, the destiny of the believer is played out within the framework of the church. Don't ever kid yourself or let the devil tell you or influence you to think that you can do what you want to do in the kingdom of God without being a part of the church. And that includes being part of a local church. And I've already talked about this many times, but, but there is no such thing as a universal church. There's a body of Christ, but it functions as local churches. God didn't write the letters in, in um, uh, or Jesus didn't write the letters in Revelations to the body of Christ. He wrote them to specific churches. He always looks at, the Bible says he walks in the midst of the worshiping congregations. So you need to understand, if you want to see your destiny unfold, you unfold serve in the church. When, when Becky and I got, got uh, saved and started serving God together, the first thing we did was we got planted in a local church, and we were there every time the doors were open. We served. We did whatever we could. We were a part of everything that church did. Now, I'm not bragging on us. I'm just telling you, listen to me. You want to find God's destiny in your life? The hardest thing that we ever did uh, uh, was, was leave the Lakewood Church. But we knew it was God. We were following our destiny. We knew that's what, God, what God's plan was. But it was birthed in that church and serving in that church. Don't kid yourself. Listen, there are people watching online today, and you've just gotten comfortable being at home. But I want to tell you something. Being at home is not church. It's a good you getting the message, but the message is you need to be back in church, whether it's here or wherever it is. I, I, I know people, I, I actually know people who say, well, I just got used to watching church in my pajamas. I like it. <laughs> that's not where your destiny is. That's not, where your, that's not where the plan of God is for your life. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to, you're going to follow God and flow because that's, that's really what God has for ours. If you ever get a revelation of this, it'll change the dynamic of your life. It, it, it will totally change the dynamic of your life if you'll do that. The Bible says this. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And notice, and all these things will be added to you. When you're involved with kingdom work, listen to me. That's where the adding to comes. It's not the other way. Well, I got to work. I got to work. I'm too busy. I got to work. I got to work. Wait a second. And then you're going to seek the kingdom after that? No, flip it and let's see what God will do. Flip it and see what God will do in your life. Because your destiny is played out in the local church. And I, I don't believe there's one person who's a Christian who can live their life and say, I fulfill my destiny and not be a a working, viable member of a local church. I'm not talking about you show up on Sunday and do what you want to the other six days of the week. I'm talking about you're living and breathing the kingdom of God. That's where God wants us. Because your gifts are needed. Your gifts are needed. It, you'd be amazed at how much more we could do if everybody's gifts were just being used. But you've got to do something for the kingdom of God. And if you get away from using your gifts in church, you get away from, using your, you get away from your destiny. 
just use Paul as an example. The Apostle Paul went out and preached everywhere, but he always came back to his home church, Antioch, and gave a report. Always came back to his local church. Gave a report. Always part of what, what the local church was doing. So, so here's the thing. Listen, I know I've kind of given you several different things today, but here's the thing you've got to understand. God has a plan for you. And it literally goes beyond your natural existence. But think about your life on this earth. God has a purpose. He has a plan. He has a destiny for you. And when you step into that and you're a part of that and you're moving in what God wants for your life, uh, it'll bring joy to your life. It won't be perfect because people aren't perfect. I know a man many years ago, and I'm just about finished, but I know a man many years ago that I begged him to get back into the local church. He was a member. Uh, 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 in fact, he was a secretary treasurer of a church, and somehow somebody accused him of, of misappropriating funds in the church. He never went back to church a day after that. He became a cripple with arthritis. You say, well, that would have come anyway. I don't believe that. He became a cripple with arthritis. He, he lived on a lake, and all he did was fish. And, and it got to where he couldn't even crank that crank fishing because his hands were so gnarled up. And I begged him to get back in church. He said, I'll never set foot. I told God, I'll never set foot in another church. And he didn't. I don't believe he fulfilled all his destiny. I believe God had more for him. Don't, don't get caught up in that trap. Hey, I know you're here this morning. I praise God you're here. I, I would be preaching to empty chairs. I'd still be preaching, but, but praise God you're here. But listen to me. God's got purpose for your life. God's got destiny for your life. And it goes beyond your little world of your bank account or, or your family. Even your family can draw you away from church. You've got to be careful. Let God work in your life. Live, live the destiny He has for you. It's a great way to live. Are you going to do it perfectly? No. I'm, I know I've missed things. I'm sure I have. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean I don't keep striving. Amen. <clears throat> Would you bow your heads with me, please? Please bow your heads and close your eyes. First of all, I want to do this because I do feel like there are people here who have had abortions and maybe they've struggled with that. I want us just to pray together. And I'm going to ask everybody to pray. So, well, that doesn't have anything to do with me. I know it doesn't, but it'll help them pray if you pray. And if that's you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me today and let God work in your life. So if everyone would just pray this with me and help me, it'd be good, all right? So just say this with me. Say, Father, thank you today that you're a forgiver of sins. Even as the great apostle Paul killed Christians, you forgave him. Father, I ask you to forgive me because I let this child in my womb die that I can live a full life in freedom knowing that child is in heaven today. Thank you for releasing me from that, that I can be free of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.